Welcome, everyone. This is episode eight. So I don't know when to start these type of streams because sometimes, like when I'm doing these streams, I get like a, a little lag between what my words will be and when it'll actually be live. Um, that doesn't happen with YouTube. Usually, when I hit stream, everything I do is immediately broadcast to everyone. Whereas there's a little bit of a lag on Twitch. So that's one thing I'm learning. Another thing I'm learning is really scheduling properly on Twitch. Um, since again, this is new for me and this is like my third week in a row of streaming. So this is awesome. Welcome to everyone who's watching. And one thing I learned I could say is that even the more achievements you hit on Twitch, the more start to appear. So you got to hit those and they, they keep the ball rolling and making sure that you're goal oriented and going after something in the top and to get to eventually being an affiliate or a partner, which is pretty awesome. I like that on Twitch. And then of course, getting my scheduling right because I'll schedule something, then look at my calendar and be like, oh man, that day's Thanksgiving. So on that note, I had scheduled a stream for this Thursday, which I'm going to take off my schedule, but I wanted to tell you guys first, and the reason that is, is because it's Thanksgiving. I totally forgot and didn't realize it, so I want you guys to celebrate. I'll celebrate too, safely, of course, you know, don't don't go too crazy out there. Um, to that extent, I'm going to start this episode, and if you're watching the live stream on YouTube, which I either post the same night or the next night. Welcome to as well. This is episode eight. And if you're a YouTube watcher afterwards, go to my new stream channel. That's twitch.tv slash personal Magnus. It used to be Magnus 547, but I switched it to personal Magnus to kind of follow the same line of branding that I have on my gaming channel so personal Magnus and then another quick catch-up is that on my YouTube if you don't follow my YouTube search for personal Magnus on there I'm currently writing and should have hopefully this week another episode of game sales guy um, I've been writing and then rewriting because I've got several ideas and I just couldn't settle on something and then working on my other gaming uh, on my other channel my camera channel so doing a ton of stuff ton of content that I'm producing which is fun and I like it but anyway let's get caught up with where we're at in the Shenmue story now if this is your first stream and you're jumping in on episode 8 come on what are you doing watch all the other episodes although it starts from episode 2 because episode 1 vanished on Twitch but you'll get caught up from there. But if not, I'll give you the shortest, sweetest summary, which is what I usually do before we start this gameplay. So Ryo Hazuki, the main character, had his father murdered by a Chinese mafia guy known as Lan Di. It turns out that he is connected somehow with some gang called the Mad Angels in the docks of this Japan town. And all of this takes place in the late 80s. In Yokosuka is is where it takes place. So in this in this dock, it seems that um, this gang might have some information on the man who murdered your father. And the reason he murdered your father because he was after a couple of mirrors and possibly more things. And he only found one, but it turns out we found a hidden mirror in the basement, like an underground secret basement. Um, inside the dojo of Ryo Hazuki, who is a trained martial artist thanks to his father. So now he's got the mirror, he wants revenge for his father's murder, and he's looking to get more information from these mad angels, and so far what he knows is that Lan Di might be escaping back to Hong Kong, since Lan Di is Chinese, and it's all Chinese mafia related. So in this latest episode, he, he wanted to get a job, and he finally got a job because a friend that was first his enemy but turns to his friend actually hooked him up with a job as a forklift driver in the docks and he had one round at it but his next day the next day will be his first day on the job but tonight we're still at the docks and we want to see if we can find out more information before we go home and start our first day of work tomorrow so let's get this thing started here we go so i gotta find out what is 
if any, information going on. And we also know that there was a homeless guy who might have been attacked by the gang in the docks. Because they like to attack homeless people. So, but let's see if we can find out any more clues before we continue on. <sighs> ah, there's Goro. There's the guy who hooked us up with the job. Let's see if Goro. we can What's get great, some info <laughs> from him. You know about the mad angels? Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah! Working hard, eh, bro? Why are you shouting? Don't you know, bro? You don't say that name so loud! Why not? Just because! I'll leave him alone. <laughs> looks like it's 7pm. It almost looked like a cutscene was about to start, but... 7pm. And they're still driving forklifts. Let's see if this guy knows about the um, mad angels. Excuse me? I need to go home now. <laughs> or maybe not. He needs to go home now. Oh, something's gonna happen. Here we go. Cut it out! Who the hell are you? Quit terrorizing him. Look at him! Talks like a goody goody little shit! Alright then, we'll just play you! What? How about you race us? Motorcycle? A chicken race! You do know what that is, right? Okay, I'll play your little game. But if I win, you leave him alone. All guts. Start when this can hits the ground. Here we go. Take that. It's not fair. I'm just playing with you. Hey, you. You jerk. <laughs> I won. Badass. Damn. As always. Don't forget this boy. <laughs> But he find no information. It's like, okay, you just beat him up. But you got absolutely no information. And where'd the old man go? Let's see if he's in, in his old spot, which is where we found him last time. And usually it's funny, because I've, I've done that scene before, but usually I totally mess up. And uh, he uh, has his way, and he uh, pretty much wins. And then you can't redo it, I don't think, but... Is the guy here? No? I guess not. Well, at this point, I'm going to go home. Um, so Minzy42, I just read your message about, um, being a part of my Shenmue videos and apologizing for making fun of me. I do forgive you, to be honest, I don't really remember you making fun of me, and when, and I'll be totally honest, when someone, um, picks on me or something, like, on the internet, I tend to almost never take it seriously because I don't know what, what's going on with the other person and in your case in particular so I hope that you get better, better. Um, my mom has had or still has severe anxiety issues as well plus including other loved ones so it's a serious thing and I thank you for apologizing but honestly it didn't affect me at all and, and thank you for being a part of this stream and I know it's kind of late so Thank you for at least seeing that. Uh, saying that, that was that was pretty nice. I'm almost I'm touched. Uh, 
It's it's nice. No, I don't want to look at the sign. I want to get in the bus <laughs> before it's too late. I'm going home with everyone else. Wow, that was actually really nice. Thank you. Um, back to Dobuida. A place that we're not going to frequent. Now, in this part of the game, when you're when you're playing this part of the game on the original Dreamcast, it's, you know, you have the same access as you do right now, is what you're seeing right now. But it really felt to me like Disc 3 was just all about the docks and not much was going on in the town as far as story or anything else. Which is true, um, that's how the game played off, but I figured it's all docks all the time. And all of this stuff was really the progression that we experienced in the first couple of discs. In, you know, Dobuida and, and mostly Dobuida, but in also the other sections of Sakurakaoka and uh, Yamanose. But I'm going back home to continue and get ready for the first day of docks of working in a forklift what's amazing about his character too is that he rio was pretty honest with like no i've never i've never driven a forklift before and the guy's like well i'll teach you but he was like all like yeah i can do it and then he picks up on it pretty quickly depending on how good of a gamer you are but it's not that difficult to be honest when you're playing the game but how many of us could honestly say, go for a job and then say, yeah, I'll drive that forklift. I've never driven one ever or anything like it, especially his uh, entire life. He's been exposed to just basically getting what he wants or just martial arts training. But I guess that calmness in him, or at least that always picking up and learning something new, because in the entire series, Rio is somewhat of a sponge when it comes to new martial arts moves new information, he writes things down in his notebook, he's very, you can't mistake the fact that he's, he's intelligent, he's a smart kid who stopped going to school for whatever reason, but he's a smart kid because he, he constantly practices martial arts, and right here I'm just taking the easy way by focusing his martial arts in his bedroom and not, not doing too much of it, which I should probably train more if I want to survive these upcoming battles. But he just absorbs whatever someone tells him or new information, or, and he'll write it down if he's not going to remember it. New martial arts moves, My he learns it once, today. it sticks, he gets it right, and he keeps going. And learning to do forklift driving to, for a new job. So he says, I've got to I've got to try to gather info about the Mad Angels while working at docks. Mad Angels, what kind of gang is it? Well, let's go to the docks and find out what we've got in store for our first day. Love that. Like yeah. Always, three laps to the finish. Everybody ready? And don't go wrecking the fort lifts or the formula have your ass. Yeah. Yeah. On your mark. Almost time to go. I haven't done these in a while. Let's see how, how good I do. Ready? Go! Forklift racing.
Not bad so far, huh? <laughs> but this is just the beginning. Couple laps to go. Forklifts are tricky when you're racing them because they have that little thing in the front and if you get cut off and you get stopped, oh man, it completely stops you in your tracks. And then the other forklift drivers can just really come get you. But once the race spreads out like this, it's a lot easier for me. Gotta pass this guy. It's getting really annoying. <laughs> Out of my way. Come on. You can't pick up speed. These darn slow forklifts. Come on. Staring at a number one the whole time. I'm practically pushing them forward. And took it. Finished. Finished in first place. Pretty damn good for a rookie. Here's your first place prize. Thanks. Hope you work as well as you race. Now, if I want all of the forklift <coughs> race well, memorabilia, I'll do my best. Time <coughs> to get to work. Move these crates with the I'd have to get every place. Take them? Warehouse number 18. Here's the route map. The quota is written on the map. Read it carefully. If you exceed quota, you'll get a raise. Great. Just be sure you don't break anything. Okay? All right. We're going to warehouse number 18. Now, it's interesting because now the game starts to really limit you. <clears throat> All right, where am I going? I'm going this way. The game starts to really limit you on one to 17, 18. Okay, it's really close. I was trying to remember, where am I bringing these things? So the, the game limits you on time to investigate now because it, it just it just uh, wants you to work for most of the time, so your investigation time is very limited. So Shengoto, steam high pie, Magnus, time to go do donuts and boarding and keep that horn like no tomorrow. Beat that horn like no tomorrow. Thank you, thank you very much for that. And of course, that's my good old friend James Reiner commenting as I'm working the working at the docks why am i going i'm like losing control because i'm like distracted <laughs> i can't be distracted but i'm gonna get that 10 crate minimum and keep going from there with the investigation miss you too buddy miss you too um oh, get out of my <laughs> son of a gun he got all in my way while moving the while moving around the docks. Now, one interesting thing about this game, too, is that, and I mentioned this before in a previous stream, that if you actually bump into somebody who's driving their own um, forklift and they're really in your way, you could bash them enough times or at least get in their way enough times to where they completely disappear, which is an interesting weird dy dynamic or trick that this game could do could do 
and it was on that was like a glitch on the Dreamcast, and then I saw it happen here too. I'm not gonna do it right now because I want to actually meet my quota. So, one would ask, what does you finishing this job have anything to do with the game? And again, the the director Yu Suzuki, when he was designing this game, he wanted to emphasize real life. He wanted to emphasize that not everyone can just do what they want all day. You have different things that people do that are a part of the real world, such as having an actual job, such as living this life. Now, he could have incorporated a, a lot more items to, to real life, but there's only so much you can do, especially with the budget and the time that they had to develop this game. But I think that he pulled off a lot of of items that that do affect real life, like an arcade, like being able to buy like drinks, like soda and stuff, and vending machines have little trinkets that you can buy. All of that stuff is is just plain old awesome, and the fact that you can do it in Shenmue um, was was pretty cool. Um, and forklift racing in itself, when it came to actual game reviewers, it, it, it has its weird life. Because game reviewers at the time, in the early 2000s, when this game came out in the US, they were pretty harsh on Shenmue. Even though it was revolutionary in many respects, they were harsh on Shenmue because Shenmue had aspects of it that were in their eyes considered boring because they were not seeing the scope of the project or what the developer was trying to accomplish. He was seeing as in when you come from a, a game industry that was used to action heavy games such as like Metal Gear Solid at the time which was pretty cool, heavy on story but heavy on action as well. To have something that's immersive as Shenmue was, was pretty unheard of, but the developers also made, because again, this is a first crack at it, the developers also made it like, okay, let's actually live real life and have it so that you get a job, you have drama with different characters, you do all these mundane activities, you can actually go to an arcade and actually play arcade games that was intentional and one of the big things is that clock in the top right corner of Shenmue that clock on the top right is meant to represent the actual time for the character so in his time it's pretty much almost lunchtime and because it has that real world time system real world weather as well so you have the actual weather from Japan back in the 80s actual program actually programmed into this game all that real those real elements don't exactly equal fun and that's what reviewers thought because sitting around waiting for another event to happen and looking at the clock and not doing much for entertainment is by human behavior boring like us humans when we're living real life Yes, and this doesn't include any dogs, cats, or parrots, or any other animals that are watching this stream. You're more than welcome to watch the stream, but this is more focused towards our humans that are watching this show. Um, we have the instinct of boredom. Boredom is something that's programmed into human nature for a reason, because the feeling of boredom means that the brain needs something to entertain it, to, to educate it. And that's what makes us smarter as human beings, which help us keep our, keep our keen instincts, keep our, our survival in nature. It's, it's an instinct of survival. It's boredom is needed because then we learn to not only be creative, but also learn to develop things that help humanity as a whole. And if it's entertaining, if we look for fun, because fun is also important, usually fun is involves, at least back in, in uh, prehistoric times, it involved exercise, it involved moving your body around, 
which meant, meant you would be more fit for different uh, tasks when needed. So boredom is key in human behavior, and it's key to our survival, believe, believe it or not. But boredom in a video game is not going to help you any. So when you're bored in Shenmue, you're just bored in Shenmue walking around, and that's why early reviews of this game lunchtime, eh? were pretty harsh. Now it's lunchtime. And welcome everyone to this stream. Thank you so much for joining. Hey, my lunch! You read it us out, didn't you? Are you one uh -oh. of Chin's men? I don't know any chin. Oh, oh, really? I don't know. Oh, oh. hey, quit lying. Yeah, cut it out. What? Who's this twin? We're gonna teach you a lesson. Are you? Are you gonna really teach me a lesson? I'm Ryo Hazuki. So, this is one of the rare times you actually do get to fight in this game, and I'm getting handed I'm getting my butt handed to me that's partially because I haven't had the chance to practice too much I'm not faring too well here But I ended up surviving. Oh, remember this. Thank you, Dio. Who were they? They were the mad angels. Why are the mad angels picking on you? They seem to think I'm working with one of their enemies. Somebody called Chen. But I don't know him. We know Chen. Master Chen and the Mad Angels. So if you don't remember, Master Chen was the guy who pretty much um, helped us and made us realize that the mirror was actually in the Hazuki Dojo. And also he, he knew Ryo's father and seemed to know a lot about this whole situation that's going on so master chen became an important contact for rio so it seems that he's got a rivalry with the mad angels so let's pay master chen a visit which means we've got to give him a phone call before we can get in does anybody know the phone number i do i still remember it by heart zero four Six. And this could be part of boredom too, actually dialing the numbers. Remember your phone numbers, kids. Five, six, four. But remember, the Dreamcast version actually had seven as the final digit. But it's Hello? not in this. Mother's Earth. Mother's Earth. Comrades. Comrades. Father's Heaven. Nine dragons. Nine dragons. Warehouse number eight. Master Chen, please. Excuse me, but you are... My name is Hazuki. Just a moment. What is it? Yeah. I must consult Master Chen. Arrange us a meeting. Father's not around. Well, could you meet me? I need to talk. Come if you must. <laughs> Father's not around, but come if you must. Alright, so... I gotta finish work. <laughs> where am I going? <laughs> I'm like, let's get out of here. Go back home. We're done. So, off to Master Chen's. And Master Chen, like, like I said, if you don't recall, he hel helped us out in the beginning. But for some reason, that really hasn't been explored too much is that Master Chen's area is 
cut off from the rest of all the other warehouses. It's in the old warehouse district. So this part right here is considered old warehouse district. Hey, wait! And you're not allowed in Excuse without me. making uh, that phone call. I need to meet Master Chen. What's your name? Dio Hazuki. I've been expecting you, sir. Please. I believe in. that it's heavily guarded because of because of the Mad Angels in particular. The Mad Angels themselves obviously have this rivalry with Master Chen and whatever business Master Chen is running on this side of the docks. But that's why he's got guards walking all over the place because he needs that protection. But if he's got that protection, how did Chai Can break in before? Something? What is it? Could you translate this for me? Another scroll? A scroll, and it's in I Chinese. wanted to ask him about oh, something else. Tiger, thou art ruler of the forest, the bravest of character. As tranquil as the most majestic of mountains, as swift as a bolt of lightning, as violent as an earthquake jolting the great earth. Show no mercy, with twin fangs strike, in rush up Moon Mountain. Striking fear in all, nary a soul challenge thee. It's a secret poetry. Secret? To maintain secrecy, the technique is written in poetry form. Only one who's received the master's verbal instruction can understand its meaning. Why did my father have it? No idea. But I'd assume if he had the scroll, then he received instruction from the original master. Who was his original master? My father? I'd hold on to this. Perhaps someday you will meet the master who wrote this. Thanks. Sorry to bother you. Wait, where are you going? We, we... <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. That didn't help. All right, fine. Maybe there was no story element hidden there. But let's see what the book says. Master Chen and the Mad Angels are rivals. Let's see if there's anything else that we could uncover before we have to start work in like 10 minutes which I doubt there will be anything that we can uncover in 10 minutes. So I might as well talk. And Goro, if you just stop by Goro, it's like, Hey, bro! <laughs> That's all you'll get out of him. So, yo, stop taking Excuse a picture. Me. Help me out what here. What do you want? I want to ask about the mad angels. Oh, no, don't do that. I don't have anything to do with them. I see. Thanks. Corey's I see is, is truly legendary. It's already this late? <laughs> Yo, bro! Was it number 18? Was it warehouse number 18? Yes. Warehouse number 18. We'll continue. Now, more working at the docks. More working at the docks. One item that I did want to mention here is that, thank again, thank you for everyone who has joined me since the start of these streams, but I wanted to give special recognition to Corey Marshall, the voice of Ryo Hazuki, who is also doing Shenmue streams as well. He's putting on a show Mondays and Fridays on Twitch. His, his actual Twitch channel is Corey Marshall VoiceOver Pro. It's twitch.tv slash Corey Marshall voiceover pro. So I believe he goes on at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And he was on yesterday. It's, it's a fun time with a lot of Shenmue fans to watch it. And if you watch it, you're actually watching the voice of Ryo Hazuki play Shenmue, which is a really awesome feeling in itself because it's like, you're hearing him talk in the stream, but then you hear him on the game as well. It's it's uh, it's truly epic. You're right. It's truly epic. 
So, so it's a fun time. So I definitely, if you like these streams and you like the story, um, and you want to actually see someone play the game who was who was partially behind the voice of of uh, Ryo Hazuki, the English voice, then I'd suggest definitely checking that out. And I'll be there as well, as long along with other Shenmue fans. We all kind of jump in there and, and want to join them on it. So it's it's a good, it's good times. It's good times. But if you're here, thank you as well because we're carrying the story. We're talking about the lore of Shenmue, and that's why I am doing this because that's what we want to investigate. Now, speaking of the kind of history that I've touched upon when it comes to. Iwao Hazuki, which is Ryo Hazuki's father. Um, a brief synopsis of, uh, in what I've talked about in previous videos, Iwao's got a past. He lived in China, and my theory is, that I've mentioned many times, is that he had his entire life in China, up until he basically got, I guess, Ryo's mom pregnant. And uh, it's that life that he le lived in China also revolved a lot around martial arts training and it also revolved around the whole mystery that began with the reason that he was murdered why he took those mirrors away from China why he murdered uh, Landi's father and what that had to do possibly with the with the mirrors themselves and what, what caused him to take that from from Landi's father, which is, I believe, the original owner of the of the mirrors, and that's why Landi had, you know, come after Iwao after that many years because he witnessed his father be murdered, and Iwao, I think, intentionally killed him, not just for the mirrors, but because I believe that Rio's mom was somehow directly or indirectly related to Iwao's anger and wanting revenge because Iwao saw his, let's call her wife, Ryo's mom, killed. Ryo was potentially, in my theory, born in China and, or at least of Chinese descent. And after that those events happened and, and the revenge and anger to what was his best friend and that whole murder it, it kind of started a tailwind of revenge stories so you had Iwao take revenge for his wife's death on Landi's dad Landi takes revenge for his father's death and now you as Ryo want to take revenge uh oh, hey, more boy. instances here. You working hard, eh? <laughs> what? You ain't paid your insurance. That ain't right. Law of the Harbor dictates all rookies gotta pay insurance. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. What insurance? I said pay up, boy, right now. You guys mad angels? <laughs> Again, so straightforward. Idea. You don't pay up, boy. I'm gonna kick your ass. No way. He knows nothing of these guys or this history. And because of his martial arts decision. training, he feels that he's untouchable. Let's get him! And now you, as a player, is gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna get jumped by three. Two was hard enough. I'm gonna get jumped by three guys. So I'm gonna do my best here. To take these guys out. And I did. Wow, that was ridiculously All easy. Right, guys. <laughs> no! Uh, hey, wait! <sighs> I didn't do a good job of chasing them out, that's for damn sure. And this, uh, this area is getting kind of packed with boxes. I am not the neatest guy with a forklift. I tend to be reckless when it comes to actually packing, packing all these boxes. But I got one left. 
So if I didn't meet my quota, I don't know who would meet their quota. I don't know who, you know, or what it would take to, to meet my quota. But by meeting a quota, I guess, early, the advantage that that gives you is that you get to pursue the story sooner and investigate sooner because it gives you a lot more free time. I didn't think there were any boxes left here. What am I... There are no boxes or crates. Am I done? I should be done. Why am I still in a forklift? <laughs> All right, let's 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 go here. Let's go back here. Maybe I didn't stack them properly. Maybe I gotta... All right. All right, maybe, maybe I should clean up my mess, right? Clean up my mess a little bit. Better? No? <laughs> Still gonna have me moving around boxes? Fine, fine. Well, let's see if I can ah, pick this up again. Yeah, I have no room for this. All right, I'll I'll, I'll move in here. Goodness, I feel like lines. oh, it'll only let me place it in the lines. All right, I'm putting it on top. Good enough. How do I get out of this? <laughs> There's no escaping. There's no escaping. I am forced to be in this. Ah, I might as well go for a drive. Why not? All right, maybe I can see. Maybe I can run into a forklift driver themselves, and see what happens when they disappear. That that glitch I talked to you about when they kind of get in your way and you just want them out of the way. All right, I'm gonna hit him head on. I just passed him. All right, maybe. All right, come on, I, I gotta get around this guy. Ah, oh, he disappeared, see what I mean? He just vanished. Let me see if I could run into another guy and make that vanishing happen. Cause I already did my job. I did all the crates. Goro, I'm sorry, I almost killed you. Alright, so he's there. Boom. You saw that? Completely gone. Boom. I am like turning them all into ghosts. Oh, you don't want to. Oh, he's gone too. Look at that. I always thought that that glitch or that. I don't believe that was a glitch. If it. If there's anything about that, I think it's probably related to. Let me see if I can get past this guard. Nope, it's like back away. That guard's like the toughest guard in the world. I think that, that that glitch is meant so that, or purposely programmed in the game so that you're not too annoyed when you're just trying to make it to your destination. And see, I'm gonna make this guy disappear because let's say I needed to get through, they'll be like, okay, he's out of your way, keep going. And it, it allows for less irritation when you're trying to get just somebody out, out of your way. See, he's like, no, you're in my way. Let me through, let me through. But he's not disappearing. He's just backing up. Come on, man, do the disappearing act. All right, maybe he's too strong. You are a special one, my friend. But the guy behind you, what was that? Whoa, <laughs> whoa. If you didn't think there were ghosts in this game, there it, there it is. He l oh man, oh snap, what the? I think this has to do with the assets that, whoa, that are currently present maybe? Is it okay? Maybe too many as uh, game engine assets present at the same time, which when it comes to, the if since this is usually in the original Dreamcast code, I believe that has to do with the fact that the Dreamcast itself could only handle so many polygons and so many characters on screen at the same time. That's why when you're walking through the Wida in the original Shenmue on the Dreamcast, there's a lot of like, like just sudden appearing of characters like right in front of you that, that you didn't notice like a long time before that. So, and it's just because the, uh, the draw distance, at least for characters, was not extreme and they didn't change the code too much for this HD re-release they basically just kind of retooled the code for Windows and just said okay 
it's really original Dreamcast engine running on an HD uh, resolution, but you're basically getting the same game as what you used to have on the Dreamcast. And all I'm waiting for right here is like for 5 o'clock to hit, because I pretty much did all the crates. And that's one of the shortest jobs whenever you're doing the forklift jobs. So 5 o'clock is hitting. Again, it's one of those things where you just need that the uh, time to pass and there it is Finished for quitting the time okay good job here's today's pay <laughs> I could have done donuts outside of the cafeteria didn't see so that comment. Tomorrow, you'll get a 50 yen raise that'll be 350 yen per crate thank you Keep up the good work. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that's another thing. Like, he makes so much money. Yo, bro! <laughs> Yo, bro! Oh, the hard man. <laughs> you said you knew a lot about the harbor. Right on, my man! From the perfect mugging locale to the best spot <laughs> it's your boy, it's your boy. This here harbor, Goro knows it all. So you know about the Mad Angels. Uh, I, speaking of taking a leak. Not so fast. Oh, man. Must have had me a bad ache this morning. Gotta hit the can, my man. Oh, hope I can make it in time. Oh. <laughs> so you know about them. That name. Please don't say it so loud. Why not? You get yourself fed to the fishes for talking about the man. It's taboo around here. There's a rumor about some loudmouth kid who got himself concrete boots for talking. No way. Well, bro, I'm out of here. See you around. Yeah, later. He didn't give much info. <laughs> Again, he just lets him go. <laughs> so, so a lot of that was Rio's personality, as in not asking why, just asking what happened and who, but why is important. <laughs> and, uh, you can walk around like Goro in public. No problem with that. Whoa, calm down, dude. Kuisa. You never know when to give up, do you? What do you want? I'm here to teach you a new move. Like that'll be real helpful. You couldn't even handle the mad angels. Much I've been kicking their ass all day. day. What are you talking about? Shut up. Look, I don't need your help. Hey, fine by me, but it's wise to accept the goodwill of others. So, what will it be? You are mine or not? Again, he's a sponge for information. Well, if you're so eager to teach me, okay. You could be more appreciative. First, I'll show you the form. Watch. One step back, shift your weight. While backing up, kick. <laughs> I love the way he does that. Dive. The swallow dive. Now you try it. That's good enough. Now, while backing up, kick. Try it. Whoosh. Hmm. Pretty good. About what's expected the first time. I've got it now. But your technique is still off. <laughs> it's, it's still off. Now I'll teach you how to utilize the swallow dive. The moment you drop back, you invite your enemy in. And that's when you counterattack? That's right. I'll demonstrate it thoroughly. Well, you want to practice more? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> 
No, that's enough. Fine, I won't push you any harder. You've only learned the basic movement. You'll need to practice to master it. Le leg move swallow dive hasn't been mastered. And I mentioned this before, in the Dreamcast days, that move would appear on the controller as well, and your controller would beep. Why it's pretty cool. Move? You're intent on going to Hong Kong, right? Yeah. Even knowing that you may die? No matter what. Really? So I thought. Really narrow-minded of Rio. If I were you, I'd do the same. That's why. That's why what? <laughs> so, that conversation comes from an earlier conversation or argument that they were having in front of Master Chen. Where Master Chen was realizing that Ryo wants revenge. And Master Chen was like, hmm, something's wrong here. And Ryo was like, going to Guizang, and he's like, well, if it was your father, wouldn't you do the same? And it was kind of like, what you say, boy? So that moment that you just saw was kind of Guizang coming around and be like, you know what? You're right. I'd do the same. I, I, I could kind of at least understand your motivation. But as far as the path that you're taking, it's still wrong. Because like I mentioned before, Rio grew up, in my opinion, based off of the evidence that we found, a pretty spoiled kid. Got everything that he wants he lives in the top of the hill huge home his father's dead but he still gets money every day he gets taken care of he's going on this naive revenge quest he took his friend's money he lost his friend's money when he wanted to go to hong kong it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of uh just things being fed to him and the familiarity of annoying you it's you What are you doing here? Wanna pay you back for helping me out. Teach you something useful. Suppose I show you rather than tell you. Let's see you try and punch me. Okay. <laughs> it's like I want to show you something. Couldn't punch me. And punch. It's like okay. <laughs> you call that a punch? That was lame. That'll be the famous Hazuki style. How do you know the Hazuki style? If you really want to know, give me your best shot. Okay then, here we go. Why am I missing? <laughs> This was a real fight. I just crushed your throat. Damn. How did you do that? There's more to mastery than offense. Evasion without getting hit is an art in itself. My sensei used to call this move the shadow step. Shadow step? The shadow step. So, how about it, son? Wanna learn it? Nah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yes. Every move in his arsenal is, is definitely First off, necessary. Show me that their basic Hazuki style stance. Alright. Hmm. That ain't too bad. <laughs> now come and do what I do. We'll see a step forward. Pull your arms in a slide real quick. Once you slide up behind, cut a blow to the neck like so. 
Now, start from your basic stance. Move your weight forward one step only. So each time he he get, instructs me, I actually move on the controller. Like so that. he really As you step like that's forward, interesting. Get ready you to uh, and throw. actually do what they tell you now your with turn. the controller in the game. Forward one step, nothing else. Your movement is not good enough. At the same time you dodge, you gotta throw. <laughs> I forgot what he was saying, so I didn't know exactly mm, what to do. Right, nice. You're a quick study. Thank you very much. Got that touch you do. How about a bit more practice? I think we get it. <laughs> We're good enough. Just do it once. No, I think I'm alright. Thank you for the instruction. Well, don't go forgetting to practice every day. Now Perhaps we'll meet again. Perhaps we'll meet again. And it's raining. Please wait. How do you know about the Hazuki style? The Hazuki names known amongst martial artists. Why? The style of Iwao Hazuki is revered by many, including me. So Hazuki Iwao... Quite popular in spite of being so young he was. My so father? that Hazuki style, that he move, came when he was young with that, that style. Day. And had his own style. Mm. No sense in fighting. Sometimes. In theory, uh, he must have come to Japan 18 years ago. Victory. <laughs> as a young, as still relatively young, with his own style that he gained from China. Ever need practice in the day? Try warehouse number four. Sometimes I'll be there myself. Be sure and practice daily. <laughs> now the importance of martial arts in this game is actually you know part of the storyline that was trying to be developed but actually it has everything to do with educating Ryo not only in martial arts but teaching him about really the value of and the lessons that you learn that are coupled with martial arts. Not just using it for self-defense or offense, but actually take the lessons with you. And that was something that Iwao tried to ingrain in him. And I'm gonna take him home at this point, because I think we've done enough meddling for today. But that's something that was ingrained in Ryo <clears throat> from the very get-go you know that martial arts is important so martial arts has almost monetary value to Rio but from a from an education standpoint that's where really he's going to school so whenever someone wants to teach him a brand new move or anything he takes it in even though he thinks believe it or not up to this point he thinks he can still take on Lanti, and he doesn't care, he just wants his revenge. But everyone who deals with Ryo, or, or sees his martial arts training, many true martial arts masters, know that there's something lacking when it comes to his mind. When it comes to his movesets, he's pretty good, he can defend himself. But his mind is not where it needs to be. And that is where, I believe, we experience together the character growth of Ryo Hazuki. And that's kind of the lesson that really Shenmue is trying to teach us. Like, we're so used to these other video games, especially at the time that's just, you know, some event happens and then we action platform our way, killing multiple enemies on screen at once to get to the boss, and then we have leveled up all our character traits enough so that we can just 
defeat the final boss and win the game and have our revenge. That's what you'd expect in a typical video game. And why didn't get, they give Ryo Hazuki an umbrella and Santa gets an umbrella? I'll never know. Come on, man. Not even Tom can get an umbrella, but he's too cool, so he doesn't need one. <laughs> but Santa gets an umbrella? Well, come on, what is that? Look, everyone else is walking around with an umbrella. Where's Ryo's umbrella? Shenhua, let's have a conversation. Nozomi. We haven't talked. Ryo, you know, I heard from Hisaka-san that the harbor is a real dangerous place. That's not true. I heard That's you're not true. A fight there. I'm fine. I'm fine. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That the, their relationship is meant to be, isn't it? Anyway, so this game, the point of this game is that it tries to teach you that patience, understanding your craft is all important in character growth because yes, the at first you believe it's, it's all about revenge and getting revenge, but by the end of at least these chapters that we're playing you're, you're starting to find out that you you gotta really grow as a person and Rio right now has a apparently a full-time job now um, so he's getting paid earning his own money but yet still taking money from his housemaid because you're getting basically an allowance on a daily basis so you get an allowance and you have a job but it's still not enough to buy a ticket to, to uh, Hong Kong so all of this is just come on man you still got a lot to learn and he's still in a safe area because he's very familiar with his home with people in his neighborhood and he lives come on in the biggest house in the area Ah, oh, I got a lot to learn, Ryo Hazuki. So let's do one hand training. We got into a few fights today. We want to definitely get that elbow assault a little bit higher. Let's do a little bit more training for that elbow assault because I want it to be the most deadly move in existence. From here, we'll save. And this was another Shenmue day, because we spend one Shenmue day on these live streams. And what did we learn? The Mad Angels really have control of that harbor. And they've got to be stopped. The Mad Angels just are completely reckless. And we've got to run a, a few more investigations and really get into knowing what they're up to and what their information is on Lan D. But that's it. That's it for today's stream. Thank you for joining as well. This was fun. The, I always like these live streams. And as I always mention, I'm going to do the re-upload on YouTube, which it should be up today or tomorrow. I will have a game sales episode within the week on my YouTube channel, Personal Magnus. Definitely subscribe there and follow me on twitch.tv slash personal magnus and we can grow this community but thank you guys for joining this stream it's been fun and i'll see you tomorrow where we continue the story in the docs and a little bit more personal information on shenmue see you later